Hey guys, it's Ryan. In this video, we're going to continue to talk about oral pathology. And now, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. So these next two are really big categories. And we're finally talking about lesions that are directly related to the teeth. So odontogenic cysts are derived from cells associated with tooth formation. So odonto, referring to tooth, and genic, referring to formation. And basically, residual odontogenic epithelium can undergo this cystification process at any time, and except for a few, the stimulus for cystic change is kind of unknown. So cysts, by definition, are cavities lined by an epithelium, and that's super important, as we'll see when we talk about each of these odontogenic cysts. So first we have the radicular cyst, and it's also called a periapical cyst. And it's the most common odontogenic cyst that we're going to talk about in this video. So it's probably the most important one to know a lot of information about. So radiographically, it's a radiolucency at the apex of the root. So it's this giant um, shadow here, and it's around the apex, which is why it's also called a periapical cyst, or around the apex, and radicular referring to its association with the root. Now it's always associated with a non-vital tooth, and a non-vital tooth has a necrotic pulp, which causes periapical inflammation. So you can see this giant cavity here, bacteria have a really quick way to get and access all this nutritious pulp and can travel down and secrete their uh, bacterial byproducts and cause um, inflammation and basically wreak havoc at the base of the root, at its apex. And this is a, probably a bit of an oversimplification, but an acute inflammation would result in more of an abscess, whereas a chronic inflammation would result more in a granuloma, where the body has more time to mount a response and involves granulation tissue. So this next bullet point is kind of wordy, but it's actually super, super important. So we'll kind of break it down. So we have these epithelial rests of malassez from the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath within a pocket of inflammation encapsulates the lesion, resulting in the formation of a cyst. So what the heck does that all mean? Well, rests are basically residual or remainders from tooth development. And these happen, um, these, the ERM, happen to be residual cells from Hertwig's epithelial root sheath, which is an um, important structure in tooth embryology. It's so basically associated with the cervical loop of the enamel organ of a developing tooth. And these rests, or residual cells from development, are um, the reason, uh, are the cause of this um, epithelial lining that forms this cavity. And um, the actual etiology, the reason why um, these epithelial cells form a lining, is because of this in infection and inflammation due to a necrotic pulp. So necrotic pulp is the etiology, and the ERM are the, is the origin of the epithelial lining of that cyst. So treatment would be root canal treatment or apicoectomy, where you do a direct surgical access of the apex, or extraction of the tooth with curatage, which means you're scraping the walls of this lesion to take care of any infection or inflammation. Next, we have dentigerous cysts, which is probably the second most important, or the second most common, odontogenic cyst. And it's also called an eruption cyst if the lesion occurs over an erupting tooth in a child. And whereas in the radicular cyst, we had this radiolucency centered around the apex, for dentigerous cyst, now we have the radiolucency, which is attached to the CEJ, or the cemento enamel junction, where the enamel meets the cementum of the root. And you can see how this radiolucency comes neatly attached to that point of the tooth. Now, it's most common with canines and third molars. And here, this looks like it could be a second molar or a third molar. Let's just say this is, in fact, a wisdom tooth. 
and it's a, an accumulation of fluid between the crown and the reduced enamel epithelium, which if you notice, I had in red the epithelial rest of malice, which is a, an embryologic term, an embryologic structure. And here again, we have reduced enamel epithelium, which is another um, structure from tooth development. And treatment for this would be excision, but it may be the source of a future odontogenic tumor. Next, we have lateral periodontal cyst, which is most common in the mandibular premolar area, as seen here. Now, this one is always associated with a vital tooth. So you can um, sort of contrast it to the radicular cyst in two main ways, where the radicular cyst was associated always with non-vital teeth, and it was centered over the apex, whereas this one is not. Next, we have gingival cyst of the adult, which is basically the soft tissue counterpart of the lateral periodontal cyst. So you can see that its location is in between the roots of these two teeth. It looks to be in the mandibular premolar area, which would be its most common location. And because it's only in soft tissue, there's not going to be a radiolucency because we're not in bone in this case. Then we also have gingival cyst of the newborn. And this one has some fancy words associated with it. Bonds nodules is when the gingival cyst occurs on the lateral palate, and Epstein's pearls is when they occur on the midline palate. So in this image here, you can see this tiny little white pearl, and it's in the midline palate, so we would call it an Epstein's pearl. Now this one, as far as our um, origin, our point of origin is again from a developmental structure in tooth embryology, and it's the rests or the cell remainders of dental lamina, which epithelia, epitheliolize the small lesions. And treatment for these is actually no treatment, and they will involute or go away as infants age. Next we have primordial cyst, which develops where a tooth would have formed. So a tooth should have been there, it didn't come, and now we have this radiolucent pocket. It's most common at the mandibular third molar region. And treatment would be complete removal. Next we have keratocystic odontogenic tumor, or the KCOT for short. Now this is also sometimes called and was previously referred to as the OKC or the odontogenic keratocystic or keratocyst. So um, it's kind of gone back and forth between being called a tumor and a cyst. Um, but now we're going to talk about it sort of as a mix of both. So this one is aggressive and recurrent. So it's mo definitely more aggressive than the other ones that we've talked about so far. It's most common in the posterior ascending ramus of the mandible. It involves this thin, corrugated, perichoratinized epithelium, if we're thinking about it histologically. So now we have, it's been a while, but we have another syndrome. This time it's Gorlin syndrome, and this one involves multiple KCOTs, multiple basal cell carcinomas, which we talked about when we talked about our uh, carcinomas for uh, mucosa. It involves this calcified Falk cerebri, which is associated with the brain, and it is actually fatal and also called nevoid basal cell carcinoma. So it has its link, this name has its link to the fact that it has multiple basal cell carcinomas. And so that is a very important syndrome, and I feel like it's pretty frequently tested, so I would remember all of those little factoids associated with it. Treatment for this one is aggressive enucleation, so it's not enough just to go in and excise the lesion, but you actually have to be very aggressive in removing that and some surrounding bone. Next we have calcifying odontogenic cyst, and it's also called a Gorlin cyst. And I say confusingly because, well, we just talked about the Gorlin syndrome with KCOTs, and now we have Gorlin cyst, which has nothing to do with KCOTs. So that's something that's a little bit confusing and certainly doesn't help us when we're trying to remember this kind of stuff. So the calcifying odontogenic cyst is rare and unpredictable. 
and it involves, most importantly, these things called ghost cells, which are empty spaces where the nucleus was, and keratin fills it. So it's a cell, and it's missing a nucleus, you have keratin in its place, and they can undergo calcification, which causes these little radio densities, or these tiny little radiopaque flecks, and um, you can detect that radiographically. So that's how we can uh, determine that it's a calcifying odontogenic cyst, rather than, say, a KCOT that we just talked about. All right, guys, and that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more on oral pathology and other things dentistry. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.